Dr. Ernest Kang, President of the IPAS Singapore, Prof. Sam, and uh, members, ladies and gentlemen, very good morning to all of you. Glad to see so many of you. As an IPAS uh, advisor, I do encourage all members to support the activities in IPAS, as well as, of course, constantly providing feedback to IPAS, the association, the society, how they can improve upon their activities to enjoy more members as well as to be more appealing to new members. This few days has been a, a busy time for, for the government as well as members of parliament, ministers, because it's a budget period. And I think last two days we had a uh, quite a vibrant, I would say, and then dynamic debate within parliament itself on a budget. This year's budget, in some way or another, uh, is different from previous years. But the difference is only in its focus. And there's, there are three focus in this year's budget. And I will say that three main objectives. I think you have heard it before, you heard it from Ernest as well. The budget is an inclusive budget. So we focus on the inclusiveness allocating resources, especially for those who have fallen behind or for those who need help, elderly, disabled. Secondly, it's about investing in the future. Investing in the future features greatly every single year in our budget, whether it's education, whether it's hardware or software. We're investing in the infrastructure for the future. Thirdly, and probably one of the most important aspects in each and every year, we have to look at the whole economy, how it's doing. And this year in particular, in particular for the economy, we're looking at economic restructuring. As you know, in the last two days, if you've been caught up with the debate itself, you know that there was a lot of call for help for our business sector and especially the SMEs. Almost more than half the MPs may asking and continue to advocate for the SMEs in their survival, their sustainability, their going concern. And I was actually joking from members that I came from two other ministries that were pretty busy in the last couple of years' budget. It was, I was in the Ministry of Transport, and the Ministry of Community Development, Youth and Sports. Those were ministries that get the most questions. And when I was assigned to Ministry of Trade and Industry, I thought, well, that's great. This time I'm, I have an easier time because the economy is doing well. And I think usually MTI doesn't get as many questions on during the budget debate. But after the first two days, I realized I was wrong. There was more questions about the SMEs and about the roles of some of our MTI stat boards as well. Nevertheless, it is all good. It's been a good debate. It's all good on a budget where we try to manage and cater for all the needs of the different parts of the society, different segments of the population, and enabling the business sector to restructure, go through a transition process so that we can build a more sustainable economy and a stronger Singapore. Under the budget measures, there were several schemes and programs introduced, whether it's an individuals or families to businesses. For the individuals and families, as you know, there's a higher CPF contributions for the elderly and the doubling of a healthcare spending over the next five years. And as you know, one of the main features was a permanent GST voucher fund. This will go towards enabling more people to have a better quality of life or in some way to defray some of the costs that they are facing as the cost of living continue to climb. And it shows our commitment to inclusive growth and to ensuring the fruits of our labour or the economic growth are shared with the different segments of the community and the society. And responses to this initiative so far has been good very positive, but I believe that more can be done and we'll have to look at how 
those policies or schemes, whether they need to be refined. We have some measures for businesses as well. Well, as you know, ICPAS has organized a round table, the feedbacks gotten, gathered. Singapore Business Federation, uh, one of the committees I initiated and I'm advising them right now, the Small Media Enterprise Committee, SMEC, they have also gathered feedback and put up 17 recommendations to the MOF before the budget was announced. Several of the feedback gotten from both our table and SMEC as well as other chambers of commerce and trade associations were accepted or were considered seriously and some refinement was done. So as you know, many scream about the cash flows. Really, small media enterprises, one of their biggest challenges on a day-to-day -day basis, as we always have told many of the government stat boards, as well as our public servants, that the businesses, even if we want them to go through transition, we want them to restructure, we want them to be productive, they have their day-to-day -day bread and butter issues and the cash flow to be concerned about, to worry about, to survive. And as such, I think for the first time, help, helping businesses cope with rising operating costs in a sort of slowing economy, we're giving one of cash grants of up to 5,000. Well, 5,000, the last two days debate, some felt, well, that's a, that's a amount of it. It's not very high, it's not very big, you know. It's manageable, it's a good gesture. But I think the, the gesture is not just a gesture itself, but for very small enterprises that we're worried about, because there's a lot out there, 90 percent or 90 over percent of the registered enterprises in Singapore are the local SMEs. They employ 70 percent of the workforce. And with the $5,000, you could help very small enterprises at the first stage, at the initial stage. But there will be other schemes that also help to defray cost, whether it's asset investments or expansion. I think the schemes are many out there. And it takes time, of course it takes time to digest. But even when the cash grants of 5,000 seem small, the grant to help all of these companies itself is not be all and end all. There are of course other programs and schemes that are yet to be announced. Because the next two days, including today, MOF is going to address questions on all the different schemes and MTI tomorrow that we will actually share more about what other things that can help the small medium enterprise. As such, some 320 million in funding is also expected to be distributed under the scheme. The budget has also enhanced the PIC, which is Productivity and Innovation Credit. And many, many of our MPs actually uh, during the budget debate mentioned about the difficulty in applying for such grant. We hear, we hear that very loudly and clearly, even before the budget statement came out. Yeah, I think refinement's been done. I think some of the new schemes may be announced later. Well, we also saw enhancement to employing the elderly. We want to encourage enterprise to employ the elderly because, not only because people are living longer, but we believe that as they live longer, they will be healthier. And I think they can be a productive workforce as well. So special employment credit to encourage enterprise to employ and retain older Singapore, Singaporean workers above 50 years old. This will also, or we hope, can help offset some of the tightening of the foreign labour schemes itself. Because as the DRC has been reduced, the ratio has been reduced by 5%, and as you know, many of the companies are feeling the crunch. We have to find all sorts of ways, whether it's productivity scheme, restructuring of their own business model or processes, but also have different schemes to help upgrade the current workers that they have or to employ workers that can be productive, but not in the workforce at the moment or in the workforce, but not being hired. 
or in the workforce, but not being hired in the right roles or a product, more productive role. We hope that some of the schemes will also help offset, as I earlier mentioned about higher CPF contributions, and also especially for these experienced workers. We believe this is a win-win situation for all businesses because hiring older workers can offset some of the depletion in labour and also tap on these schemes, but it also we believe these older workers have the wisdom and experience to contribute. Another series of budget initiatives to help businesses was to focus on skills upgrading. The government recognises the need for businesses to continuously upgrade the skills of the workers. As you know, we are big into CET, Continuing Education Training, we are big into skills upgrading. When you tap on those schemes, you actually almost get subsidies up to almost 90% or even more. Let me also emphasize that we want to encourage businesses to upgrade all the workers so that you can become productive and competitive. This will take time. And I think time was also what some of the members of parliament mentioned, that time is needed as we go through this restructuring. How do you smoothen things out? And we hear you. I think we have to also consider whether this economy could wait for us as changes is very dynamic. And as we forecast for a slowing economy, how much time do we have? Well, businesses can also now claim tax deductions of up to $10,000 for in-house training costs under the expanded PIC scheme. And this in-house training will no longer need to be certified by the Singapore Workforce Development Agency or the Institute of Technical Education. And so companies can exercise more flexibility in customising the training needs for your workers. As you know, the F70 payroll cap will now be raised from 450 to 750 per hour over the next three years so that the cost can be covered in, as you incur for training that takes place during the office hours. Over the longer term, we need to ensure that we are on the right track because all of this put together is to help looking at the long term to build a stronger Singapore. There are a lot of uncertainties as we read the numbers, GDP numbers and also the GNP numbers. Over quarter to quarter, if I look at the sector growth, manufacturing continues to be a very important part of Singapore's economy. They have the volumes of jobs. End of the day, we want to grow this economy. We want to keep this economy vibrant. It's all because of the jobs and the jobs for our fellow Singaporeans. That is a very important aspect to understand how economic policies, how we derive some of the economic policies, how we draw up some of the ideas and initiatives as well. And the National Productivity and Continuing Education Council, chaired by DPM Taman, focuses on that, focuses on restructuring, bringing the productivity, you know, it's very hot buzzword today, bringing the productive element into every single company and enterprise into the business sector so that Singapore continues to add value as a vibrant economy, as a country because it's a very competitive landscape out there. And it was set up in April 2010. Of course, the first committee chairman, council chairman was uh, DPM Tio, Tio Chi Hien. They pushed for national productive growth to 2 to 3% per annum and that's the forecast for the next 10 years. I can tell you it's, it's difficult. It's very tough. 2 to 3% looks small, single digit, low single digit, but it's not as easy to actually bring up the productivity in a way because it needs a collective effort. Collective effort by the whole business sector. Well, including the accountancy sector. I think there's a lot that the accountancy sector could do to improve productivity. The question is how, how do we do that? I think the government needs to work with the business sector very closely. The stat boards also need to work with the business sector very closely, forming task force, joint committees 
figure out what is the best way to move forward. Figure out how we can go through this whole process in a less painful way. So this is, to me, just a budget statement. And as far as business sector, as far as the ministry is concerned, as far as all the trade associations are concerned, I think we need to work together. It's a joint effort. And the budget doesn't end there. Even after budget debate, the statement's done. The schemes continue to make progress to be implemented. But I believe that there should be continuing effort to look at what are the new initiatives, even at the current scheme itself, what the refinement that needs to be done. It must be a joint effort, even from now. Because as we go through this journey of restructuring and transition together, while well, we recognize that all this restructuring and shifting to productivity-driven growth is going to, it's not going to be easy, but, and it will also cause difficulties and challenges, I can assure you, we're constantly, and we have never been working closer. With setting up all these task force and committees, it's a way to move forward. So as we move forward, I think we want to engage the different sectors to hear your views and continue to get your feedback. It doesn't have to come out just only in Parliament, but can come out in sessions like this and also in other kind of roundtable discussion. We will also continue to engage other industry stakeholders, of course not just accountancy, but many others, especially the service sector. I think the service sector is a sector that probably will face certain crunches, crunch and also in some way or another will face a great challenge as we go through the productivity change, tightening of labour, and also at the same time, they are an integral part of the economy that we want to grow. So this is a sector that we will pay special attention to. But I'm confident that as we work together as a collective effort, we can secure a better future for Singapore as we build a stronger Singapore to face the challenges in future. So with that, let me wish all of you a fruitful seminar ahead and thank you very much.